it's still Hello. Big. Give me a hug and a kiss. Oh, you gonna leave? Uh, I'm gonna stop this. In about 15, 20 minutes. You won't be done by then. Yeah, I will. Okay. Hello, everybody. How you doing today? Uh, it's a good day for us, and uh, uh, hopefully it's a good day for you. It's definitely a day that God has made, and uh, we hope that you'll rejoice in it and find something to rejoice about because really when you count your blessings they are a lot of them and so see if you can do that all right the lesson today is um, why do i pray i mean it, it's a simple thing and you know we need reminders all the time as to the reason we do things as christians and many people have put out lists and things uh just as simple reminders all the time. And I took one of these lists and uh, added some scriptures to it. And so the Bible does offer us many reasons to pray to God. And our prayer life indicates how strong spiritually we are with our faith. Uh, I heard a per person say one time, prayer is an indicator of our faith. And when you think about it, yeah, it, it really is. And so faith goes along with prayer. And if we don't ask in faith, it's really not going to happen. All right, so since the Bible does offer us many reasons, let's just look at a list of a few reasons to pray. See, I pray because I believe God listens. I mean, this, this should be a great blessing for us to know that because let's face it, you think God is busy? I mean, with billions of people on this earth and millions praying all at the same time and he hears everyone individually, I mean, that, that is awesome just to think. And in 1 John five fourteen, now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Another reason I pray is because God has told me that he cares and is able to help. I mean, God is able to help us. I mean, we read in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And yes, our Father does care. I mean, Luke 12, 6 and 7, and Hebrews 4, 16. Another reason I pray is because I lack wisdom. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You know, James 1, 5. You know, we, we always need to ask God for wisdom. I mean, we, we should be doing it all the time because we're, we have the opportunity to do things. You know, when Nehemiah, when the king asked Nehemiah, what can I do for you? He said, I prayed. I went and prayed. I mean, so ask God to give us the wisdom. You know, we're supposed to give an answer of the hope that's within us. Maybe before you start answering, you should say, God, give me a little wisdom here. Let me... Uh, let me put these things together logically and uh, in a way that's understandable. And, and so, yes, we do need wisdom. We need wisdom to learn how to deal with people because, you know, people in society is always changing. What was acceptable a, a short while ago is now unacceptable. And what was unacceptable many years ago has now become the norm and acceptable. And anybody who doesn't go along with it is going to get in trouble. So, yes, we need to ask for the wisdom that God gives us. I pray because my Savior said I ought to pray. All right. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Luke 18, 1. And that, that's true. We need to be praying. You know, when Paul said pray without ceasing, that's included there, and in 2 Corinthians 4, twice he says, we do not lose heart. Why? Because we know God is there to take care of us, and there's nothing can separate us from the love of God so that we read about there in uh, Romans chapter 8. So, yeah, we don't need to lose heart, and as long as we keep God in, in the forefront of our mind, as we start thinking about God, then there's no reason to lose heart because he is there for us. I mean, he's our stronghold. He's our fortress. He is our shield. He is our defender. I mean, so many things that he does for us, a very present help in time of trouble. All right. I pray because I'm thankful for all the good things God has given. 
you know, it says there in First Thess, I mean Philippians four, uh, six, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in pr everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God, and that's true, and we can compare that with Colossians four two and First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen, and so yeah, I mean. We make our requests known to God. And first of all, if we ask things that are according to his will, we know he's going to answer it. He's going to respond in a positive way. Now, if we're asking for selfish things like uh, get me a new car or something like that, then no, that and when we're thinking selfishly. But if we're asking for anything that he would want us to be praying for, like pray for all men, yeah, I mean, he's going to hear that. I pray because I need pardon. I mean, let, let's face it. We, we all have sinned and fall short of his glory. And so John wrote to the those who had obeyed the gospel. He says, my little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You know, 1 John 2, 1. And that's true. We can go to God and pray. And we can pray that our sin does not capture us and drag us into hell. And so we need to do that. Uh, sometimes we make a, we, we sin a lot. We shouldn't, but we do. And so we have to approach God and say, I've sinned against God, and against God only have I sinned. Yeah, sometimes we do things to others that they might call sin, but sin is transgression of God's law, and we sin against God, and yes, we mistreat others, and we need to ask for their forgiveness as well. I pray because I adore and love my Heavenly Father. You know, that's what Jesus said, In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, Matthew 6 and verse 9. And so, <clears throat> we read of many accounts in the Scriptures of, of people who prayed to God, and sometimes they had some great results. Notice what, what James wrote in 5, 17, 18. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. And, and so James 5, 17, and 18 and right before that, it said, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James 5.16 And that's why I say when somebody's having problems, they need to let us know so we can all pray for them. Because somewhere in that group ought to be at least one effective, uh, fervent prayer. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that God's going to listen to. So that's just the more help we can get when more people are praying for us and when we're praying for others, it's more help that goes around. Now in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3, Paul wrote this, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. You know, despite what the, what the current trends are in our country, we should be praying for the leaders. I mean, they, they do some things that we're not happy about, and they make decisions that really just slap God in the face uh, by turning people away from God, but yet we're still told we need to pray for them. So we, we must do that. And even when the media and everybody tries to convince us you have to hate this person or that person and not elect them then okay well then that's okay no it's not okay our command from god is to pray for them and that's what jesus said about your enemies i mean pray for those who despitefully use you pray for everybody now, a lengthy passage of Scripture we read from Ephesians three fourteen through 21. See, we pray because we, we believe God has the ability to grant even more than I'm able to think and ask. I mean, I talk about this all the time because this, this 
verse uh, in verse 20 it's just captured my attention here but let's go back even further back in verse 14 for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. I mean, that, that prayer is just an awesome prayer. And to just consider this God is able to do it exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Have you ever tried to picture heaven in your mind? I mean, when, when you consider how great and magnificent and awesome it's going to be there, whatever you think in your mind, he puts two words in here. He's going, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So heaven's going to be better than you can even imagine. And that's something that kind of sends chills down my back and gives me goosebumps. Just thinking heaven is going to be much better than I think it is. So, I mean, it's just something pretty awesome to consider. See, I think this is a pretty good list, and like I say, you get all these lists, and then you can add to it and expound upon them, and it keeps your mind focused on spiritual thoughts. And so, this is a pretty good list, but you can add to it. There's many reasons to pray, and if we remember to pray, our life is going to be better. It's going to be more focused on God. We're going to keep in tune with God. And we're going to know that we have the assurances and the promise of God that he is going to hear us and he is going to guide us and he is going to protect us. And when we see that, our faith is going to be made stronger. In some cases, our faith just needs to be renewed. And sometimes that process is uh, the renewing of our minds. But where does that come from? What we learn from the word of God. So our faith will be made stronger. So ask yourself, why do you pray? And, and if you'll start listing the reasons, why do I pray? And one of you out there can probably make a list, seven reasons of why to pray. I mean, that, that, there's something to consider. So anyway, uh, think about these things. That's our lesson for today. And Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.